Hi, my name is John Lees. Uh, I'm from Imperial College London. Um, today, I'm going to tell you about two software packages um, that we hope will make your lives easier as modelers um, and also open up some new modeling possibilities. Um, so the motivation for this talk is based on our experiences in real time modeling. Um, specifically, I'm going to be focusing on the case where you have a mechanistic model of infectious disease transmission, and you try and fit that to data. Uh, so the process kind of roughly where you would create a model which represents what you know about the biology of transmission. Um, you then use time series data uh, from a range of sources to fit the model parameters. Um, and then using those fitted parameters, um, you can then run uh, forecasts um, into the future um, or change the parameters um, and look at how the world could have been. Um, particularly, this is based on our experiences modeling COVID-19 in the UK. Um, I think this had a few additional requirements. One was that the model needed to be flexible um, as it was updated weekly, uh, roughly in response to new understanding of data, new requests. Uh, it needs to be fast enough to be fitted to data that came in uh, every day. And also as it's being used to make some policy decisions, um, is important that it be both trustworthy and consistent. So if one were to design a mechanistic model of disease transmission, probably the simplest thing you could do is make an SAR model, uh, possibly with some added compartments in, um, work out the ODEs, um, solve those forwards in time, um, and get deterministic trajectories. Uh, if you wanted to add more flexibility to that, the kind of obvious endpoint, I think, would be to go for an individual based model uh, where you model every member of the host population um, and model different things about them. Often the way this is implemented in practice is one of these bit vectors, uh, which keeps track of information about the host, such as their age, uh, vaccination status. Um, so the deterministic compartmental models uh, sort of advantage of that as well as their simplicity is they're very fast to run, but it's difficult to make those uh, flexible enough to represent what you want uh, to know about the, what you want to model about the disease process. Uh, individual based models are kind of at the other end of the spectrum, of course, you can make them almost as flexible as you want, um, but it may be difficult to do any inference from them um, due to the time they take to run. So what I'm going to motivate, so hopefully this is motivated what I'm going to talk about in this talk, uh, which is uh, something I'm going to refer to as many compartments to casting models. Um, and the idea with these is that we take some of the best features from compartmental models um, and some of the uh, desirable features from individual based models. Um, so kind of the simplicity and the speed from compartmental models, some of the flexibility uh, and the stochastic nature of individual based models. Um, and create a complex model with lots of compartments, um, which we're going to fit with sequential Monte Carlo. Um, so that's sort of fine um, if you decide that's a good way forwards, but the difficulties um, you would probably face if you wanted to do this is that you would find uh, these models difficult to write in the first place, but also change, test that they're still working um, and maintain. Uh, there would also be a lot of support code to write. So as well as your model, you would need to probably write some of the inference techniques. You would need to deal with data streams. Uh, and you would also find that this takes a long time to run um, and, and probably quite similar to an individual based model um, implementation. Um, and that's why I'm going to address in this talk. So I'm going to tell you about two packages um, that solve these problems and let you write this sort of new class of models. So you're going to write your models in the own language and then you're going to run them using the dust package. Um, at the moment, both of these packages are available in R, um, but hopefully coming to Python in the near future. Um, and together, these will create flexible stochastic models, um, which run very quickly. Uh, so firstly, just to be a bit more concrete about what I mean about many compartment models, um, if I wanted to add uh, flexibility into um, a basic model of, say, COVID-19 transmission, um, I could probably one of the first things I would do is add different age classes. Um, and that would sort of copy all of my compartments downwards across all the age groups so you can see straight away that increases the number of compartments in the model considerably. Um, let's say I then wanted to have vaccinated, unvaccinated, that sort of adds another dimension behind increasing the number of compartments. Uh, and basically, the more flexible you want to make the model, normally that's going to increase the number of compartments. 
taking this perhaps to its logical conclusion, you might end up with a model that looks a bit like this. So this is our group's model for COVID transmission course for COVID. Uh, you can see there's lots of compartments uh, replicated many times. And the most recent version of this model actually has 15,000 compartments, which is representing a lot of um, biology of transmission and also of the, um, of the host population. Um, I've got some figures sort of down the side to give you a sense of, of how big this model is. Um, and our packages have been letting us um, run this model um, every day um, sort of since the start of the, since the start of the pandemic. Um, I'm not going to talk about that model um, in detail here. Um, I'm just going to use it as an example of one. Uh, I'm going to tell you more about the packages um, that we've been working on to support this kind of work. Um, and so the first part is how you write the model, um, and that's going to be in the ODIN language. Uh, it's a language that looks a lot like R um, and doesn't look too much like C++, which is good. Um, it'll let you work entirely from R. Um, it, the language itself is a domain-specific language, but designed specifically with states-based models in mind. So it does a lot of things to make your life easier if you're writing this kind of model. Uh, the model itself is then written out to C++ if you're running on CPUs. Um, or CUDA code if you want to run on GPUs. Uh, I'll talk about that more in the, in the second part of the presentation. Um, it's quite like STAN, if you've used that before. It's a language that's a bit like R, um, has some crossover with C++, but not all of the full complexities, um, and is able to create very fast-running models. And then in the end, you end up just with a normal R object that you can call um, simple functions on that let you run the model, fit it, um, and simulate trajectories, sort of all the kind of typical um, modeling techniques. Um, I'm not going to go into any more detail about the specification of this language. Um, if you want to use it, though, we've got um, a number of vignettes. Uh, you can also look at the examples, for example, the COVID model. So this is the start of the COVID model code. Um, a couple of things to point out is you can see that it has names that correspond to the um, compartments in quite an understandable way. Um, you have these this syntax where you don't have to specify um, repeating the loops over, for example, um, ages or vaccination classes. That sort of worked out automatically for you. Um, and again, uh, kind of the best um, source for this are the package vignettes. Uh, so in the second part of this, I'm going to talk about sort of the second part of the problem, which is then actually running these models uh, fast enough. So hopefully it's now with this language easy to write these models, um, but now how do we run them fast? Um, and basically the problem we run into is, is something like this. Um, the time it's going to take uh, to run the inference is going to increase with the number of partitions in the model. So as we make it more flexible, uh, the longer the time series will make it longer to run. Um, if we increase the number of particles, which reduces the variance and the likelihood estimate takes longer, if we increase the number of MCMC steps, which increases the effective sample size, that increases time. Uh, the only way we can decrease time is by increasing the efficiency of the code or increasing the number of the threads. Uh, specifically, kind of in the real time setting, uh, often the time for inference that we've got is fixed, so we can't just let things run for longer and wait till it completes. We need to do it on the day um, in response to the data. Um, we will probably pick a fixed number of particles and a fixed number of steps that work for us. Um, we actually don't have to run across the whole time series. We can just save the state um, and run it across the bit of the series that's changed. So that is fairly constant. Um, and what this problem or, or battle sort of boils down to is that if you want to add more flexibility into your model by introducing more partitions, you have to increase the efficiency of the code um, or increase the number of threads. And the way we do this is through the dust package. Um, so this is a C++ package um, that just binds into R and binds into Odin code. Um, and it will automatically create compile code that runs quickly. Uh, we've put quite a bit of effort into working, uh, making this a good simulator, um, looking particularly at random number draws, um, which are sort of a very important underlying bit in any of these stochastic models, um, making sure it works well with any level of parallelism. Um, and this lets you run a full particle filter um, to do this kind of inference um, in parallel across either CPUs um, or more recently graphics cards. Um, and graphics cards each have thousands of threads, um, so you can really increase the efficiency um, even further. 
Um, and specifically, this, this is kind of a recent plot of uh, benchmarking this, um, but, but just to explain this plot on the right in, in, in a bit of detail, um, on the y-axis um, is the time it takes to run a million particles of the COVID model um, forwards across time series. Um, you can see at the top, the top dash line is running that on a single thread um, already just by using uh, this kind of uh, transpiles from Odin into C++ code versus just base R, you're getting a few hundred times speed up, uh, but that takes uh, a few hundred seconds. Uh, moving down to the um, second and third dash line, uh, you can see by increasing the number of CPU cores, you get a roughly linear speed up um, in the time the model takes. And then the red line at the bottom is um, using a single GPU. Multiple GPUs are possible, but it's just using a single GPU. Um, and then the reason we've got an X axis on here is to show you that you need um, a lot of particles for this to be efficient. So before the COVID model I showed was using about 200 particles, um, but this is needing uh, tens or hundreds of thousands. Um, this is possible to get by running multiple regions on the same card, so you can put multiple data streams on there. Um, we've got a few other tricks um, to let you get up to that limit. And overall, this is sort of running maybe 100,000 times faster than naive R code. Uh, but the nice thing is it looks just like what you would write in R. Um, if you just put this in R and, and ran it, um, you could kind of replicate this plot. Uh, all it requires um, are these two packages. Um, and all you're saying, GPU equals true, um, and it'll run nice and quickly. Um, just as a quick aside, um, as well as writing out C++, it also lets us write out to JavaScript. Um, so we can get code that runs in um, a browser. Uh, so covidsim.org is a nice example of this. Um, there's a model written in Odin, which is transpiled into JavaScript and then run um, in response to user input in the browser and, and run on the user's machine. Um, and you can get nice plots of scenarios out. Um, so just to summarize, um, sort of I think, what I've tried to cover in this talk. Uh, hopefully um, I've convinced you that stochastic compartmental models can be a good compromise between uh, speed of a model and doing inference, but also making a flexible model. Um, that in the past, them being slow to run and having a lack of support in well-tested software have made them challenging to use for real-time analysis. Um, but with the Odin and the Dust packages, um, we hopefully take the time and the pain out of writing support code for those models. Um, the code will be fast, um, it's tested very carefully, um, and we think it's reliable. Uh, enough to be used for all our fitting um, of COVID-19 uh, over the past now couple of years in the UK. Um, and then more recently, you can use these graphics cards um, to fit even larger models and getting a roughly 400 times speed up um, over a single CPU core. And that speed up lets you put more flexibility into your models uh, by adding more partitions. Um, so it's, it's useful um, for modeling the biology, uh, so not just from the computing side. Uh, and crucially, you can do all of this from R. You don't ever have to care about how GPUs work um, or CUDA code or C++. Um, so just some future plans, CRAN release hopefully coming soon, uh, as I mentioned before, Python interface, which will let approximate Bayesian computation methods work a bit better, uh, a few new tricks to get up to those many threads in smaller models, um, and we're also going to look at the way that we um, optimize the model graphs, um, hopefully getting further speed ups there. Um, happy to answer, talk about any of that more in the questions. Uh, I'll just end there, uh, link to the packages. I've, I've talked about sort of the two most important ones, but there's a few others that sort of fit into the framework. Um, a few references if you're interested in looking into this. Uh, I also just want to specifically point out um, Rich, mm -hmm. who's really written the bulk of this code um, and sort of driven the design of these packages forwards. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for listening. Um, and I would be happy to take any questions.